In today's video, we'll guide you through the ins and outs of Japan's bullet trains. So fast. Taking you on a journey from Fuji to Kyoto. From booking tips to the train experience, we've got everything covered. After that, we'll turn up the heat as we show you our favorite ramen spot in the city. Today, we're heading to Kyoto. And to get there, we're taking the bullet train! It's so fast! All right, so we have made it to Mishima Station to take our train from Fuji to Kyoto. And the process of getting here is actually quite complicated because a lot of the tourist spots and the main areas where you're gonna to wanna to stay in Fuji aren't actually close to the stations where you get the bullet train. So we're gonna quickly do an overview, step by step of how we got here. So first thing you need to do, you need to get to Kawaguchi Station via local train. And just outside the train station, there is a bus stop where it will take you to Mishima Station. However, you do need to reserve a seat for the bus as it's going to take one hour and 30 minutes to get there. It's going to cost you 2,300 and if I can find the link, I'll put it in the description down below. So make sure to check that out. But anyway, we are here at Mishima Station. Let's go to Kyoto. So fast. <laughs> Here comes our train. Oh, look at the little windscreen wiper. That's so cute. Wow. We've made it onto the bullet train, guys. This is actually our second time on a Shinkansen bullet train, but last time we did it, it was just a short 10 minute bullet train from Osaka to Kyoto. But this time, we've got a long old journey as we go from Mishishima to Kyoto for one hour and 50 minutes. Now, this train is actually the quicker train because it only has three stops compared to the more popular and more frequent bullet train called. Kodama, which is 50 minutes longer because there's more stops. It's very quiet and it's very busy guys. We literally got on and it was packed. Yeah, and I feel like we have to whisper because it's so quiet. But actually, this bullet train's really quiet and it's so smooth. It is. I feel like the buildings are going past so fast. Like it actually feels like we're going at the speed of lightning. <laughs> speed of lightning. <laughs> With your bags, there is actually a limit on the size of it. A normal large suitcase is normally okay, but if it is oversized, you will need to reserve another seat, which is at the back, so that you can put your luggage in the oversized baggage bit and that shouldn't cost you any extra but if you don't book the reserve seat you will get fined a thousand yen for bringing an oversized bag on board without reserving it beforehand. You can also put it on the overhead cabin, be good. Mm. So let's do a train seat tour. We've got a nice comfy chair here. There's little things here so your head doesn't flop so you can rest it on there. Look. There's a little flap here and you can recline. I'm not going to recline too far because Zara always tells me off from reclining with the person behind me. Um, we've then got a table. Look how quite a big, table, big that it? is, yeah. Huge. We've got a little net. And then we've got loads of leg room. Mind my bag, um, I am gonna put it in the overhead bin, but I just need to get some things out of it first. But yeah, really, really comfy. And guys, the coolest thing about these bullet trains as well is if you're in a group of, let's say, six people, you can actually, there's a little foot button and you can flip them round so you can face each other. How cool is that? I'm serious, you can, yeah. But I also bought some snacks just in case. A little waffle set. Basically, a waffle with 
jumbo chocolate filling. Wow. That one time you heard me say triple chocolate filling, you turned around. So the Shinkansen bullet trains are the fastest and most convenient way of discovering Japan. The network is extensive and the trains have a top speed of 320 kilometers per hour, which is almost 200 miles per hour. Now one thing you may want to consider that not many people talk about is the fact that actually flying can be cheaper than taking the bullet train. Last time we were here in Japan, we decided to take a flight from Osaka to Tokyo because it was half the price. So definitely check that out and I think if you're a tourist you get it cheaper than Japanese citizens too by entering the details of your return ticket. So I think everyone falls into the trap of automatically thinking that the trains will be cheaper than flying but that's not always the case. So if you are on a budget definitely make sure to check out how much it is to fly between destinations and see if it works out cheaper. There is obviously also the JR Pass, but you will need to check whether it actually works out beneficial for you or not, depending on how many journeys you're taking around Japan. And if it's return one way, there's all these different factors. We haven't got a JR Pass because we're not taking enough trains around Japan for it to be worthwhile the money spent on it. However, I do know that a lot of people, when in Japan, you want to try the bullet train for the experience, right? Because not many countries have them. You can either do like we did and do just like a one way, whether it be between Tokyo and Osaka, Tokyo and Kyoto, or Fuji and Kyoto. You can do one of them, or if you are really on a budget and want to experience a bullet train, we recommend doing the 10 to 15 minute bullet train between Osaka and Kyoto is about 15 pounds, so really, really affordable. So if you want to do what we did, book it with Kluk and use a code to save some money off. Yeah, and it was a really smooth experience. We just scanned the barcode and we had our tickets. tickets really, really quick. It was really smooth. So we have arrived here in Kyoto. That was a very smooth journey. We basically floated all the way here. Yes. Like you don't feel anything, it's super quiet and yeah, really enjoyable. Definitely recommend getting the bullet chain, whether you want it for the experience mm. or the convenience. It's great, honestly, hour and 50 minutes. And I also forgot to mention guys, you can also scan a barcode right next to your seat where you can order some food, coffees, teas and some that. hot drinks. I would have ordered if I know. Oh really? I'm hungry. <laughs> now we're going to start heading over to our accommodation. Oh, it's really cute really. We've got an Airbnb and the guys offered to come and pick us up for free. Can oh, you imagine? So, so nice. Oh, hi -oh. hi Yes. Hi. Uh, oops. Okay. What? Oh. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Hi. Oh, nice. oh. Okay, so we have now made it to our Airbnb. I will leave the link to this place in the description. And guys, this place is crazy. I'm actually, this is such a find. Um, I was actually finding Kyoto was actually really expensive um, for just the two nights. Now it doesn't help that we are here at a weekend because I have noticed everywhere in Japan at the weekend the prices double, triple or whatever but I think we are paying about $25 each per night here so not too bad and guys it is spacious. It also comes with free pickup I think they even might drop us back off at the station after as well. So really, really good. And yeah, let's show you around the place. All right guys, this is the most spacious place we have stayed here in Japan. Let me show you around. So this whole place is ours. Look how huge that is. Like we've got this huge traditional Japanese table with a nice kimono design right there on the wall. And then our sink is here and it's quite big actually. Mm. Toilet is just on this side here. Decent size. Look at that. Of course. Ooh, Japanese toilet is just insane. 
we've got this table here right in the middle with a rotating chair. <laughs> and we've got two bean bags as well. But anyway, flat screen TV right there. And we've got some drying rack just on the other side because we can also do our laundry here for free. Let me show you the best bit. <sighs> Look at this. Look how big this place is. Wow, so this is our room. So we have got our three futon beds, which is very traditional. And we get the overviewing of our little street here. And then look at the walls, guys. Look at the walls, very traditional. I love it, lots of paintings. There's also a microwave, a fridge, a washing machine, which I told you about earlier. And there's also a Lawson and a family mart just outside. And there's also a bus stop, which is just a two minute walk, which is very close. And so thank God today was a travel day and the weather didn't affect our plans too much. But let's hope that the weather will be better tomorrow for a full jam-packed day in Kyoto. I think we're going to do like some kind of guide, so definitely watch out for that. We'll show you the best things to do, the best things to see, the best things to eat. It'll be a good one. Alright guys, so we are now here outside Fire Ramen for dinner. It costed us 230 for the bus, and I think for the bus it's 230 everywhere you go, so... <laughs> oh my gosh, even second time around, that is so terrifying. My heart is racing right now. I felt like I was having a bit of a panic attack. I was like, <laughs> Oh, it's so scary. The heat and the flames are so big. Oh my gosh, my face, is, am I red? I feel red. You're red. Oh. That was so hot. It was right next to my face. How was that, Arjun? It was so hot, bro. It was insane because the fire was right in <laughs> yeah. my face. And the whole time on mine, is my GoPro okay? <laughs> I thought it was, it was right there. Like, the fire was next to the camera lens. So you didn't even so care about your face? Just the, yeah, no, I was just worried about the GoPro. I was like, yo, is it fire? <laughs> but anyway, guys, I can't wait to eat this. Let's dig in. So we've got this amazing looking bowl of ramen. It's absolutely full. Spring onion, I think there's some garlic in there. And then the meat. I think it's beef, I'm not too sure. But just gotta go straight in with the taste test, haven't we? Mm, just as good as I remember. Honestly, really tasty ramen. And then you just get this like hint of smokiness right at the end. Honestly, really good. Mm. So nice. I get the crunch from the spring onions. It's really perfect for a very cold day and a rainy day, which is perfect for today because it's been raining all day. But so much flavour, guys. Let's try the meat. Enough to try the meat. So tender and juicy. Just so good. This place is just amazing. If you are ever here in Kyoto, check this place out. So after that amazing experience at Membaka Fire Ramen, we are back at our place. We just got some snacks from Lawson. We've even tried our first 
Japanese alcohol. We thought it was beer, but it's actually not. It's actually really, really nice and it's super cheap actually. So the fire ramen, it costs 2,000 yen per fire ramen, which is probably our most expensive meal I think we've had yet, but it's definitely more of an experience. And 2,000 yen really, it's still not that bad. I pay way more for a normal meal back home. So really, really good. And it's a must do here in Kyoto. The man actually remembered us from a whole year ago, which is crazy. Think how many people he sees a day and he remembered us and he gave us two little badges because we came back. He's really, really nice. Highly, highly recommend. We were planning to go to Nishiki Market, but because of the queue for the fire ramen, we actually ran out of time because it closes at 6 p.m. So we'll show you it in the next video. But anyway, we're just gonna have a chill evening, go to sleep, and we'll see you in the morning. Whoa.